Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents, and we are about to read 2 Peter, 2 Peter chapter 3, starting at verse 1. The second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandments of us the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this, first, <laughs> that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the waters and in the water, whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and, and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Whoa. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day with the Lord is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some concern, as some count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Woo! The earth also and the works mm, that are therein shall be burned up. Wow. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Um, the thing we have to be aware of is the reason a lot of people want to eat, drink, and be merry. They want to rise up to play. They want to do their thing. They want to play on Facebook. They want to play in the movies. They want to do all their little things that they do. And, and the media is doing a great job of dummying society down. So I am trying, like many other YouTubers who are working for the Lord, we are trying to wake us up. Yeah, because the one thing about sleep, when you sleep, you sleep, you rest, you relax, your guard is down. You notice most demonic attacks happen while you're sleeping. Mm. There's a reason for that. So when we're going through these, the approach of these last days, this is not the time to sleep because right when you least, not when you're looking, when you're least expected, that's when the Lord's going to come as a thief in the night. Now, what were you doing two days ago at four o'clock in the morning? What were you doing last week at 10 o'clock at night or at 12 midnight? Would you have been ready if the trumpet had blown? 
and God came to call his people home, would you have been ready? See, we have to guard ourselves at every given moment. Thank God for his grace. So be careful to always live in the realm of his mercy, his long suffering, his patience. All of that is part of salvation. Thank God. But don't ride on it, y'all. Don't buy a ticket and live there because that's what you go through. You go through your salvation to eternity. You don't park there and say, well, I accept that the Lord is my Savior, so I'm going to do what I want to do. No, don't go like that. Yeah, there are rules to every game, y'all. Whether you play or whether you live this life, whether you work on a job, whether you go to a bank, whatever you do for the government, whatever you do in your private life, even crossing the street and driving down the road, there are rules to obey. The rules are for our safety. So we have to be very, very careful. We have to be very careful not to play games. You notice a lot of people, they get careless and they, they think that they can do whatever they want to do when they're big and bad enough to do it. And they end up with tickets on top of tickets on top of tickets on top of tickets. Every time they look up, here comes the cop. Why? Because they're not being mindful of the laws of the land. They're not being mindful to obey the rules that say you stop at a stoplight. You stop at a stop sign. If the light is red, you stop before you turn right. And in some states, you wait till the light turns green before you turn right. You have to know what the laws of the land are. Well, it's the same way with the Lord. Get to know his laws. Now, God is fair. And there are some things he doesn't hold us accountable for if we don't know. But don't keep yourself ignorant just so he can't hold you accountable. Don't do that. Because there's so much of life that you will be cheated out of. So much of life that will be very hard on you because you don't know how to handle it because you decided, okay, if I'm ignorant, I won't be held accountable, so I just won't read the word. No, because you fall into a whole lot more trick bags of the devil. And you spend your life struggling rather than living because you didn't use what God placed in his word for you to get free. Hmm. See, God makes a way of escape at every turn, for every trial, for every problem, for every challenge, for every issue, for every temptation. God makes a way of escape. But if we don't know his word, we don't know that way of escape. Now do we? We don't know where the escape hatch is. We don't know how to get out of it. So we get caught up. And if you get caught up, guess what? What if you're right smack dab in the middle of what you're caught up in when he busts through those clouds? So either way, you must not remain ignorant. You must get in God's word and have him teach you weapons of our warfare. Have them teach you how the Holy Spirit will enable you to live holy. Let him teach you that all things are passed away. Behold, all things are becoming new. Let him teach you how you renew your mind by the washing of the word. Let him teach you to operate in love, not be a man pleaser trying to impress. Let him teach you the authority you have over your flesh, over your will, over demonic attacks, over the devil himself. You go out of this world, go out into this world un, unarmed, unequipped, ignorant, and you are a sitting patsy for the devil to beat up on any time he chooses. And 
It won't be but a New York minute before you say, forget God and everything else. So you must keep yourself bathed in prayer, in God's word, in his presence. Mm -mm -mm. In his presence is fullness of joy. You want joy, you want deep inner satisfaction, and you think the other lover, or you think that your better half is going to bring it to you? No. You think a pocket full of cash is going to do it? No. That internal itch, only God. That little itch down there that nobody can touch, only God. Only he can scratch that. Only he can satisfy it. So, in these last days, you have to be watchful, you have to be mindful, you have to be careful. Now, I just want to warn you not to get caught up in the things of the world. Because that's what the media would have you do. Get so caught up in the things of the world that the very thought of sitting down and reading God's word is boring. The very thought of getting with God's people Ah, I'd rather go do that. Well, there are times we would rather go do something else. But in these last days, in spite of what you'd rather go do, it's better for you to do what you know you need to do. You ever sit down with a child and tell them eat their vegetables? They don't want to eat vegetables. They want to eat the junk. Well, that's our flesh. Our flesh desires junk at all times. But what do you do? You make that child eat those vegetables, don't you? Because you know in the long run how it's going to benefit. You know how sickly people can get when they've been malnourished from day one. So you know you got to keep their nourishments up to par. Well, it's the same way with us with, with, with our walk with the Lord. We have to keep spiritually nourished at all times. Anyway, so I'm not going to hold you long because I know some of you are busy. This is Saturday. There's a lot going on. But I do pray that you be mindful of the day and age we're in. This is not the time to lay down. This is not the time to lay down our weapons. This is not the time to undress and kick it. This is the time to press in. Things are coming. I don't know what's coming, but things are coming. And we must be ready mentally, physically, spiritually. And I ask you, are you ready? Are you doing what it takes to be ready, to get ready? Be prepared, you guys. Crazy times are already here. It's going to get crazier at warp speed. Beware and stay under the shadow of the Almighty.